Today, I have in my hands one of the most interesting Ultrabooks of early 2025, the Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360. Yeah, the name is a bit long, but the idea is clear. It's a thin, powerful, with an OLED display, a stylus pen, and Intel's new Core Ultra 7 chip. I've been using it for a week now, and you know what? I'm genuinely impressed, not just by the performance, but by the little details that usually don't get much attention. First thing you notice is just beautiful. Honestly, in the last few generations, Samsung had really mastered the premium finish, revealing Apple. It weighs under 1.7 kilograms, feels super light in a backpack, and despite how thin it is, the chassis feels solid, no flexing. The gray aluminum body barely picks up fingerprints. It's a two-in-one laptop, so you can flip it all in the way around into the tablet mode. The hinge feels sturdy, no wobble. But the main star here is a display, 16-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X with a 3K resolution. The colors just pop. It's especially great if you work with photos, videos, or even just want to binge Netflix in style. It also supports the S Pen, and yes, the stylus is included. I tested editing photos in the Lightroom. The lag is minimal, almost like using an iPad Pro. Plus, it's a 120 Hz touchscreen TOEF iSafe certified. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Honestly, this one is the most comfortable displays I ever worked on. The Galaxy Book 5 Pro has a low profile keyboard with a quiet, almost springly feel. The backlighting is even, so it's easy to work in the dark. However, because the key travel is quite short, long typing sessions might feel less comfortable. Especially if you are used to something like a ThinkPad or MacBook with a stronger feedback. But the touchpad, it's humongous. Easily one of the best in the Windows world. Large, responsive, smooth surface, and excellent gesture support. It's just a joy to use. Well, what we have under the hood? This laptop packs Intel new Core Ultra 7. And no, it's not just another i7, a fancy name. This is a Lunar Lake, a new chip with a dedicated neural module that helps speed up background tasks, noise suspension in Zoom, or AI features in Photoshop. My unit has a 16 gig of RAM and one terabyte of SSD. A browser with a 20 tabs, no problem. Light apps like Spotify or Figma, launch instantly. I even edited a short video in DaVinci Resolve and the laptop handled it without thermal throttling. You get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, USB-A, headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. There is also a fingerprint scanner built into the power button. The 1080p webcam is solid for video calls and the noise cancellation works well. But the speakers, they are real highlight. Loud spacious sound with a Dolby Atmos watching movies is a treat with no flat tiny audio. What about battery life? Samsung promises up to 20 hours on the full charge. In real world use, I got around 11 to 12 hours of web browsing and Google Docs work. Video editing, about five hours max. Cooling stays quiet, it doesn't heat up during everyday tasks, and under load, it gets a little louder, but nothing extreme. Pretty much what you would expect. So, what's the verdict? The Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 isn't just a pretty Ultrabook. It's one of the first truly well-balanced laptops running on Intel's new Core Ultra platform. It's great for anyone who works heavily in the browser, office apps, creative like illustrators or photographers, and anyone who values a gorgeous screen and portability. You can use it for video editing, but keep in mind the limitations of integrated graphics. 
There's just one catch, the price. This machine isn't cheap, especially if you care about custom upgrades or an SD card slot. So if you need a bit more budget flexibility, you might want to look at something like Lenovo Yoga Pro, but if you are after a premium laptop that literally transforms into a tablet and stays fast and beautiful, this is your pick. And now, as always, let's take this baby apart to see what we can upgrade, repair, or replace. So stay tuned, let's go. All right, folks, as always, I'm starting from the bottom of the laptop because, well, that's where all the secrets live. First thing first, I'm peeling off these four rubber feet gently like I'm handling baby. Under each one is sneaky little screw just waiting to ruin your day if you miss it. You gotta take all four out if you want to get the bottom case off. Now I'm diving in from the inside corner near the LCD hinges. Out comes the plastic pry tool. Never use metal unless you want to give your laptop a permanent makeover in a bad way. I'm working my way around like I'm opening a stubborn jar of peanut butter. This bottom case, yeah, man, it fought back. It's held down by what feels like a billion tiny clips that are all saying, you shall not pass. Took me a minute, but patient is the key. If you force it, you're gonna break the clips and then the bottom case will never close properly again. And nobody wants a laptop with a saggy bottom, especially at this price. Once you finally pop it open, boom, you get to see what Samsung's hiding inside. The battery is held by five Phillips screws. Easy stuff, just unscrew it, lift and replace. There is even a part number on the top left corner in case you need the replacement number. Samsung being oddly considerate for once. Just don't forget to disconnect the battery before messing with anything else or your next upgrade might be a firework show. Now check this out, big ass speakers on the both sides. Samsung said, let's them hear your keyboard clacks in HD. The touchpad, nope, not upgradable. It's part of the whole palm rest assembly. If it breaks, you are replacing the whole party. Only thing you can upgrade is an SSD. The RAM, forget about it. It soldiered onto the motherboard. So before you buy this laptop, make double sure the RAM size is what you want because that's what you are stuck with forever. There are two cooling fans and a heatsink, looking like they are ready for bottle. If you are cleaning or replacing the heatsink, remember to reapply thermal paste. On the left side, you've got a data board that's super easy to replace, no need to bother the main motherboard. On the right side, all the ports, USB-C, HDMI, etc. are built right onto the board. So if you break one, congratulations, you are replacing the whole thing. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Love and peace to everybody.